Hi, my name is Mark, one of the pastors at Trillium. If you look through most cultures, most civilizations, you'll find that they tend to depict Jesus in their own terms. For instance, if you go to Northern Europe, you'll tend to run across a Northern European looking Jesus. But if you go to China, say Northern China, you're going to tend to run into a Northern Chinese looking Jesus. And if you go to South India, one's going to tend to run into a South Indian looking Jesus. Or if you go to Central Africa, one's going to find a Central African looking Jesus. And wherever we go, we tend to see Jesus depicted in the terms of the people who are making the depiction. That's pretty understandable. Human beings, we tend to be parochial in our outlook. We tend to be fairly small in the way we sort of we uh, understand life. And it's easy for us to project out our own experience onto other entities, including our depiction of Jesus. Now, we don't know what Jesus looked like. We, in truth, we don't really know. The gospel writers never tell us what he looks like, and we're not completely certain exactly how Jewish people generally looked in the first century. So we don't know whether Jesus had black hair, brown hair, light hair. We don't know what his skin complexion was. We don't know his eye color. We don't know if he was skinny or stout. We don't know if he was muscular or not muscular. We don't know if he had a big nose or a little nose. We know absolutely nothing about his appearance. And it's possible that the gospel writers never tell us what Jesus looked like because they didn't know. That first generation had died off. By the time they get to write the gospels, no one could remember what Jesus looked like. It's also possible that the gospel writers didn't care. It had nothing to do with what they were committed to doing in articulating Jesus' mission, his purpose, the point of his life. It's also possible that the early church being shaped by that Jewish understanding had a, a reticence, a, a resistance to actually describing Jesus in, in physical terms. In the same way that the one of the commandments in the Ten Commandments says, you know, we're to make no graven images of God, or make no God, idols of God, this might have carried over to really resisting the idea of depicting Jesus in pictorial form. So we have to wait a couple of hundred years before we get our first picture of Jesus in the catacombs of Rome. We have this picture of Jesus, and what does he look like? He looks like the typical Roman youth living in the city. Short hair, clean shaven. Go forward another two or three hundred years, we get a completely different image of Jesus, one with long hair and a beard. What had changed in those two to three hundred years? Had there been some great scholarly insight to what Jesus must have looked like? No. What had changed was the cultural conventions that changed. You see, these German barbaric tribes had invaded the Roman Empire. They were now running the show, and the cultural conventions had changed from short hair, no beard, to long hair and a beard. And that's how they depicted Jesus. And we've been stuck with that image for the last, well, I don't know, 1,500 years probably. Every movie that I see that's ever been made about Jesus has Jesus with long hair and a beard. It's become the convention. But of course, we don't know what he looked like. And there's no proof that he had long hair, short hair, beard, or was clean shaven. Now it's pretty understandable why this happens, but it has consequences. You know, in... In the Germany in the 1930s, when the Nazis came to power, there was, a, a, over those years, a growing persecution of the Jews. And, and this is an oddity to me in the context of a Christian civilization. See, most people went to church. Whether they were, they were Protestant or Catholic, they went to church. And they heard the voice of Jesus each Sunday in church. So how could they allow themselves to be taken along in that ride of persecution against the Jews? And, and my answer is that it must have been that the German people lost contact with the Jesus of history. They forgot that Jesus was a Jew. They had been so ingrained with this understanding that Jesus was a German that they forgot that the founder of the Christian faith, their Lord and Savior, was himself a Jew, in some ways very little different from the Jews that were being persecuted around them. So, how we depict Jesus has real consequences. And living in, in, the, in the world of 2021, in this interconnected this world, this world, this very small world where we're all connected with each other, and COVID's proven this, if nothing else, how we depict Jesus going forward is actually very important. The parochial understandings of Jesus' appearance 
in some sense, must give way to a deeper understanding. You see, in Jesus' mission, he comes to live amongst us. He embraces the totality of the human experience. He's crucified and dies, part of the whole human experience. He's raised to life. He ascends, and he steps off the stage. The face of Jesus has disappeared. And I think he does this so that we might seek his face in each other. So the true face of Jesus is one that encompasses the totality of the human race. Perhaps that face of Jesus was a face taken away from us so that we would seek God in each other, so that we would find the face of God in the neighbor we are looking at today.